Hey everybody, it's great to see you my friends. Welcome to lesson three in our study of the book of Exodus. We're going to pick up in Exodus chapter three and tonight's reading is a little bit longer than the last few lessons and so I know you're looking at all of that at home. For the purposes of this video we're not going to have time to cover everything but I'll let you know where I'm reading in case you're following along and we'll definitely cover enough so everybody understands the main points of the story. So we'll pick up in Exodus chapter 3, starting in verse 7. And if you remember, Moses has left Egypt. He's been in the wilderness for 40 years. God's appeared to him in the burning bush. And God is speaking to Moses here um, out of the bush. Chapter 3, verse 7. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh so that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, But I will be with you, and this shall be a sign for you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, if I come to the people of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Chapter 4. Then Moses answered, but behold, they will not believe me or listen to my voice, for they will say, The Lord did not appear to you. Then the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? He said, A staff. And he said, Throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses ran from it. But the Lord said to Moses, Put out your hand and catch it by the tail. So he put out his hand and caught it, and it became a staff in his hand, that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. Verse 10. But Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and of tongue. Then the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall speak. But he said, Oh, my Lord, please send someone else. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is there not Aaron, your brother, the Levite? I know that he can speak well. Behold, he is coming out to meet you, and when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth, and he will teach you, and will teach you both what to do. He shall speak for you to the people, and he shall be your mouth, and you shall be as God to him. And take in your hand this staff, with which you shall do the signs. Chapter 5 Afterwards Moses and Aaron went and said to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and moreover I will not let Israel go. Then they said, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us go three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. But the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why do you take the people away from their work? Get back to your burdens. 
And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land are now many, and you make them rest from their burdens. The same day Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters of the people and their foremen, You shall no longer give the people straw to make bricks as in the past. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. But the number of bricks that they made in the past you shall impose on them. You shall by no means reduce it, for they are idle. Therefore they cry, Let us go and offer sacrifice to our God. Let heavier work be laid on the men, that they may labor at it, and pay no regard to lying words. So the taskmasters and the foremen of the people went out, and they said to the people, Thus says Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Verse 22. Then Moses turned to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, why have you done evil to this people? Why did you ever send me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people, and you have not delivered your people at all. Chapter 6. But the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand he sent them out, and with a strong hand he will drive them out of his land. Chapter 7 And the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you, and your brother Aaron shall tell Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go out of his land. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and though I multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, Pharaoh will not listen to you. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt to bring my hosts, my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by acts of great judgment. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring out the people of Israel from among them. Moses and Aaron did so. They did just as the Lord commanded them. Now Moses was 80 years old and Aaron 83 years old when they spoke to Pharaoh. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When Pharaoh says to you, Prove yourselves by working a miracle, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your staff and cast it down before Pharaoh, that it may become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Aaron cast down his staff before Pharaoh and his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh summoned the wise men and the sorcerers, and they, the magicians of Egypt, also did the same by their secret arts. For each man cast down his staff, and they became serpents. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Still, Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them as the Lord had said. Okay, let's have a prayer together. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for the Bible. Thank you for giving us just what we need in your word. Pray for wisdom to understand it and the ability to make good application. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. All right, my friends. So you remember from last time, Moses was out in the wilderness and he was living as a shepherd and God appeared to him in the burning bush and the rest of the nation of Israel still back in Egypt, still living as slaves. Now, God is talking to Moses out of the burning bush, and he tells him that he needs to go back to Egypt, and he needs to tell Pharaoh that the children of Israel need to leave and go serve God. So how did Moses feel, you think? And how would you feel if God told you that you had to go back to Egypt to do something like that? Do you think you feel scared? I mean, after all, you're talking to the king, right? And not just the king, this king kills people. And not just kills people, this king probably is still trying to kill you, like his father had tried. Or maybe you're thinking, well, I don't know if I can really make a difference. I, I'm just one person, and God is expecting me to go and change something for an entire country. Or maybe, you know, I've I tried this before when I was 40 years old and it didn't work out. And that's back when I was young and strong and, and when I was a prince of Egypt and had all kinds of connections. And now I'm an old shepherd and um, there's even less of a chance that it will work out today. Those may be some of the reasons why Moses seemed so hesitant and nervous to um, 
go do this job that God gave him. But you know what? God told him that God would be with him. God would help him do miracles. God would help him know what to say. And God would even let his brother Aaron um, help Moses along the way. So God told Moses, I will be with you. And Moses, because of what God said, decided he would obey. And that's really the lesson that I want us to learn this week, is that God will be with us if we obey. If we obey. Even if things seem hard or if things seem scary, if we obey, God will give us the help that we need just like he was willing to give Moses the help he needed to do his job of talking to Pharaoh. Now, ultimately, we know it's God who has all the power. It's God who will make things happen in terms of the Israelites uh, leaving the land of Egypt. And in the same way, we trust God fully with the blessings in our life, our spiritual growth, and fighting against uh, fighting the spiritual battles that we need to fight. But we know our role, our job, is to trust God and to obey him. And if we obey him, we can have confidence that he will be with us. So Moses is scared, but he obeys God. Now what about Pharaoh? Did Pharaoh obey? No, Pharaoh did not obey. In fact, he says, well, why should I listen to God? Or turn a stick into a snake? That's nice. My people can do magic tricks too. But what Pharaoh doesn't realize is these are not magic tricks. God is real. And I don't know about you, but I think Pharaoh is about to learn a lesson. And we'll get into that next time. All right, let's have a prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much for caring for Moses, for giving him the things he needed to do the work that you asked him to do. We know there are things that you want us to do, good spiritual work to serve you, and we know that we can trust you and that if we obey you and do what you say, we know that you will be with us and provide us what we need to have success in the work that you put before us. Please bless us all as we seek to serve you so in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Okay, my friends, thanks so much for joining me again. I look forward to seeing you next time as we see what happens between Moses and Pharaoh. Um, in the meantime, if you want to draw a picture about what we read today, go ahead and do that. You can post it in the comments below, and it'll be great to see everybody's artwork for this lesson. All right, we miss you a lot, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.